I'm going to leave you with a parting tech tip here on when to do parasitic current draw testing. Now, nothing's worse than installing a new battery in a customer's vehicle, only to have them come back in a couple weeks and say, that new battery you sold me is not working out. Batteries went dead twice. I've had to jump it. Then you check the charging system, and that's testing just fine, you know, passing all tests you can imagine. So we assume we have a parasitic current draw. But as you well know, unlike years ago, when they pretty much would not do much coming and going, they were mostly there, now they come and go a lot. Modules can wake up and stay awake and not go to sleep like they're supposed to because of a software error or something of that nature and run the battery down. But Murphy's Law comes into your shop and you check for parasitic current draw and there's none present. Well, first off, the procedure for checking a parasitic current draw can be a bit tricky. It can either require a very expensive, uh, very fragile and, and accurate high resolution inductive amp clamp with a big opening in the jaws to get around the battery cable or cables, or B, you've got to go in series with the battery cable and your ammeter, which most of us is what we do. And it required maybe a knife switch or one of these parasitic current draw switches like we have here, a shut off switch. So you basically take your ammeter, hook it to one side, and the other lead of the ammeter goes to the other side, and you open up the switch, and now you don't actually disconnect the battery. You simply change the path of the parasitic current from going through the switch to going through now the ammeter. We're not going to do that on this vehicle. What we are going to do is show you what leads up to doing a test like this. Now, the problem with all that work of hooking up the parasitic current draw test switch, the knife switch, or the rotary switch, is that it often requires several minutes, maybe a half hour, an hour of waiting for all the modules to go back to sleep because you disconnected the battery to put all this stuff in series with the battery cable. And sometimes you only find the problem's not present, so you have to check it again tomorrow. What I want to do is give you a tip on how to find if, it's, if you're needing to do the extra mile and hook up all of the parasitic current draw testing type of apparatus. So let's walk over to this Mini Cooper and see what we can do here. We already have took a booster box up a minute ago, powered it on, did the override so it would work without a battery present, and took the battery cable off, the negative. Now I connected right here through these two leads right here, an ammeter in series with the battery cable. And I made sure I had a good fuse in that ammeter, right? And so now we can see I am drawing about 12 milliamps of current. Now, if you're wondering what is a good current draw reading, what's the max value? Well, it's all over the place. But after typically a half hour to an hour, and these are very big generalities, we're looking for somewhere between 30 to 50 milliamps. Now, it could be higher, it could be lower. In this case, it's a lot lower. Time is of the essence. It has to take a while for the modules to finally all go to sleep. So ideally, you want to keep the modules all alive, put a substitute power source like I did over here at this junction box, turn it on, and disconnect that battery so we not allow the computers to go to sleep. They're being powered up through my jump box over here, and hook the ammeter in series. If you do it right, common over here, the 10 amp scale here, good fuse in here, and now I can turn that jump box off. Now all the current that's powering up those radios and PCMs and ABS modules, the little couple milliamps here, couple milliamps there, finally they all calm down and we're about 12 milliamps. Now you may be wondering, oh, by the way, you also have a high dollar, high resolution, very delicate instrument. This is a nice zero to 40 milliamp amp clamp, inductive. And it's fairly accurate, not as accurate as going in series with the ammeter, but the next best thing. It's showing about two or three milliamps. We know that's not accurate because this is the gold standard, an actual meter in series, it's 12 milliamps. But it gives us an idea. Earlier it was showing 180, 200 milliamps, and finally the modules went to sleep. So now, why do I, what am I doing, you may be asking, with the second meter to the right? So this meter right here, as you see, it's got some leads coming out there. Those leads, by the way, the black lead is coming over here to the negative battery cable, a known good ground, okay? The red lead is coming down here to a braided ground strap, another known good ground. They're both good grounds. Therefore, 
the ohms should see 0 0.1 or 0, 0.0 if I zeroed the meter, right? I've got a perfectly good ground cable going back to this cable over here. Not necessarily is it going to read that if there's current flowing through the circuit. So in this case, I have very little current flow, 12 milliamps. What is my resistance reading here? The real McCoy resistance of what a good ground strap should read. Less than an ohm. It's 0 0.16. So 16 hundredths of an ohm. That's pretty good. Now, if I didn't want to do all this work, if I just wanted to see, do I need to go snooping in my parasitic current draw testing using methods like this? Obviously, if I don't have one of these high dollar amp clamps, I'm kind of sunk with having to take the cable off, try to keep the power live, yada, yada. Bunch of work if the problem's not present. So what I want to show you is how the ammeter responds to abnormal amounts of parasitic current draw. I'm sorry, the ohm meter. The meter on the right will start wigging out when there is more than just, let's say, 50 milliamps of current draw, which would be normal. 50 and under, remember, that's normal. If it's over 50, if it's 100, 300, 500, that ohmmeter is going to show a, pulse, a false positive. What do I mean by that? It'll show resistance that's not there. Why is that? Because it's putting out a tiny bit of voltage, maybe four tenths of a volt, and it looks to see how much it gets back. What well, can't do that if there's current flowing through a live circuit? I think everybody knows this watching. You cannot, I mean, you cannot use an ohmmeter accurately on a live circuit. It's got to be a dead circuit. Is a vehicle with battery cables hooked up, whether through an ammeter or just hooked up post on the, on the terminal, is a vehicle hooked up, even with normal parasitic current draw, a dead circuit? No. How about if the door's open? even less of a dead circuit. Every electron that goes through those red wires is coming back these black wires. So let's go ahead and hit the, uh, the keyless entry and you want you to watch the current draw, 12 milliamps, and the amount of resistance that we perceive is in that known good ground wire. You can also watch that meter right there and see how it much it follows this one over here. I'm going to hit the pop, the trunk, the hatch on this Mini Cooper and we'll see what happens to my ohm meter and my ammeter. Now I'm drawing a lot of current, three amps. And what did my ohmmeter start reading? It started reading a false positive. So we'll do that again. It's about 1.23 ohms. I'm going to make this a little bit more auto ranging here. There we go. Do that again. There we go. So as we see, we can open the door up. Now I'm about seven and a half amps. Now my meter that's less accurate at lower parasitic current values is very accurate to green with this meter. And I'm showing a false positive on the ohm meter. What I mean by that is you can see that 2.7 ohms, there's not 2.7 ohms in there, there's less of one tenth or two tenths of an ohm in there. In reality, it's showing more resistance than is real. So here's the thing to remember, a lot of work to get in there in series with an ammeter to do accurate parasitic current draw testing. A lot of work only to find the problem's not present right now. Wouldn't it be nice to have a quick and easy test to determine do I need to go doing this? So I'm gonna use the little, the little jingle. If you don't have an ohmmeter that's goofing up, it's not time to go parasitic snooping. So if the meter ain't goofing, no need to go parasitic draw snooping. So if my meter goes back to 0.1, I don't need to unhook all this stuff. I don't need to get the fancy amp clamp out. I don't have a problem. So get a known good ground wire. Look at the ohms between the post of the battery negative and that ground wire. And if you see something that's abnormal resistance, it's time to go parasitic snooping. But if you don't, don't bother. You're going to waste your time. You have an intermittent.